My guest at this time is Frank Donatelli. Frank served as political director in the Reagan White House, but more germane to our conversation today, he also served as deputy chairman of the Republican National Committee during the 2008 presidential campaign, which of course featured Senator John McCain as the Republican nominee. With the senator's death on Saturday, we've asked Frank to offer his reflections on McCain from that campaign and beyond and how he thinks McCain will be remembered in the nation at large and within the GOP. And, Frank, thanks so much for being with us. Hey, Greg, good to see you. Uh, People forget John McCain was dragging really badly at one point in 2007, to the point where I think he was even carrying his own luggage. Uh, His staff got so small, but he fought back from being an afterthought in that race uh, to the Republican nominee when most people thought he had no chance. So how was he able to turn it around, and what does it say about him that he didn't pack it in? Well, lots of near-death experiences in that campaign, and you are quite correct that in the early part of the campaign, uh, there was a huge staff shakeup. There was no money, and um, he was um, uh, he was really uh, seemed to be an also ran. Um, but you know, I think his naval training and his experiences just overcoming so many obstacles thrown up in his life. Um, being able to survive five years in captivity in North Vietnam. He just was not going to give up. Um, and so he did fight back. Um, he, he embraced uh, at, at the outset one of the uh, least popular initiatives of the Bush administration, which was the surge. You recall our effort in Iraq was on its last legs, it seemed, and uh, President Bush, against all advice, doubled down on American involvement in Iraq and surged um, large numbers of American troops to try to stabilize the situation. And most of the candidates walked away from that, but not McCain. And I remember very, very distinctly his speeches at the time. Um, his tagline was, I would rather lose an election than have America lose a war. And so he was the one candidate that supported President Bush in that initiative, and the surge was successful. And along with that, McCain surge, too, wound up winning a couple of key early primaries and then went on to be the Republican nominee. Yeah, big wins in New Hampshire and South Carolina and obviously beyond. But when he got to the general election, obviously 2008 was a pretty tough year for Republicans. There was Bush fatigue. Democrats were obviously very excited about Barack Obama. And except for a couple of weeks following the Republican convention, Obama was pretty much expected to win. What was McCain like to work with in a tough, stressful environment like a general election campaign going down to the wire? Well, I like to say that the campaign lasted two years Uh, And we were ahead for about 10 days. (laughs) Uh, But it was a glorious 10 days, Greg, (laughs) right after uh, the Republican convention. But um, you know what? I mean, John McCain was always the same. He he, could he be short tempered? Absolutely. But he was a cut up more than 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 that. Um, always uh, going ahead, you know, what's the next day? Let's do it. Always, John McCain was always very mission-oriented, again, coming from his military background. Um, he, he never gave up. He, he campaigned hard until the very end. Um, it was not to be, uh, you know, we had thought that the 2008 campaign was going to be about foreign policy. And if it had, I think that would have been the one chance he would have had to win. But once it became about a bad economy and more importantly, an historic candidacy in Barack Obama, it just wasn't to be. But, you know, his um, he was always gracious. And I would just say that his um, concession speech was among the most gracious concession speeches ever. What was his reaction to the media in that campaign? They've generally given him pretty good coverage, but uh, uh, once he became the nominee and they knew he was running up against uh, Obama, they threw some pretty ugly stuff his way. Yeah, well, jokingly, uh, some people called the media our base, (laughs) which was was never quite true. I mean, they like John. You know, I mean, why wouldn't you like a candidate that you could just ride in his bus and get an interview right away. I mean, he talked to everybody. And so it was more that 
than it was issue related. I mean, John was a conservative, was a conservative. His his record was overwhelmingly conservative. But I, look, I don't think any of us had any illusions that if there was a charismatic Democrat that was going to be his opponent, he wasn't going to get good coverage. So I guess, you know, it's something that, that you expect. Um, you do your best. We, you know, we thought we had some issues that might resonate with the public, but um, it was not to be. I think the one thing about John, Greg, was, you know, he never looked back. I mean, he um, he endured five years of captivity in North Vietnam with brutal treatment, and yet he supported the Clinton administration's effort to normalize relations with that country. You know, pretty remarkable. Once he lost the 2008 campaign, it was, okay, you know, I'm still in the Senate. I'm still going to be a Senate chairman. Um, what's my next mission? Hmm. You mentioned that uh, he was conservative on a number of issues. He had a lifetime American Conservative Union rating of 80. Of course, as a result of the media, often the issues we heard most about were the ones where he conflicted with his uh, party's leadership. He opposed both Bush tax cuts. Uh, he disagreed with most of his party, I think, on campaign finance reform and certainly with many on immigration. And most recently, of course, with uh, his vote on Obamacare repeal. So how should he be remembered by uh, conservatives and Republicans at large in terms of policy? Well, I think he should be remembered as a conservative, but who was not primarily driven by ideology. His self-stated benchmark was country first, what, in my honest opinion, is in the best interests of the country. And you can disagree with how he came out on some of those issues, you know. I mean, I would I disagreed on how he voted um, in some ways, but I never disagreed with the idea that his views were always fairly arrived at. Um, the other thing is that um, he he was always right on the big issues. You know, I think of the movie um, uh, Darkest Hour that came out about a year ago, and it's the great story of Churchill and how he became prime minister of um, Great Britain at the time that the Nazis were overrunning all of Europe. And there's a scene in there where the king is talking to then Prime Minister Neville Chamberlain about making uh, Churchill prime minister, and the king is horrified. He says, well, he changed parties. Uh, there are a lot of people that don't like him. He was wrong on economic policy. He was wrong on colonial policy. And Chamberlain looks at him and says, but your highness, he was right on Hitler. <laughs> and uh, and so I think, you know, the thing about McCain is on the big issues, I think he always was right. Um, you, you know, his famous statement, he said, they asked him what he thought of Putin. And this was during the Bush years. He said, you know, when I see Vladimir Putin, I think of three words, KGB. Um, he was the foremost defender of the Atlantic Alliance. I think that's what he saw himself in recent years, the Atlantic Alliance and the alliances that have kept the peace and kept America prosperous in the World War II era. I think that's that was the legacy that he saw of himself. So the legacy should be of a conservative statesman who always tried to do the right thing and was right on the big issues. Frank, uh, in closing, you've written uh, a number of times on social media about McCain, both when we heard about his decision to end treatment and then it was just the next day that he passed away. A uh, lot of different things, a lot of different memories flooding to your mind, and obviously McCain's been a public figure for roughly 50 years now since he ever got shot down back in 1967. So um, given all that, that that's in that history with him, what is foremost on your mind as this week plays out? Well, what's foremost among my, in, in my mind is I think he was a senator that everyone should be proud of. You don't have to agree with someone all the time in order to know that a senator or any public official is a great public official in the sense that they're willing to give their best judgment at all times and they're willing to do it for what they believe are in the best interests of the country. And that's why I think John McCain's reputation will be historic and it will be long lasting. He, um, he, he, uh, he, he, he was a, a conservative stalwart who never, the, who nevertheless always put country first. And um, I, uh, I hope there are still 
men and women like that to take his place in the Senate today. Frank, thank you for joining us with your uh, remembrances of Senator McCain. Always good to have you with us. Okay, Greg. Thanks a lot. Frank Donatelli served as political director in the Reagan White House, served as deputy chairman of the Republican National Committee during the 2008 presidential campaign. I'm Greg Columbus reporting for Radio America.